Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We are not done with the rain yet, and the wind is just getting started, but we got a whole lot more both to come on Thursday and Friday. Sean? Ford Field now open as one of the nation's largest mass vaccination sites and the personal stories of why so many are coming here. All right, Sean, but we are going to begin with two significant and troubling new developments in the coronavirus. First, the number of new cases topped 4,000 today and increased by 875 cases from yesterday. The state also reported 16 new deaths. The second development, daily hospitalization rates are also increasing dramatically in younger age groups. Let's run some through some of the numbers here from the Michigan Health and Hospital Association. From March 1st to the 23rd, hospitalizations rose by more than 600% in people aged 30 to 39 and by 800% in people aged 40 to 49. By comparison, hospitalizations in those age 80 and up increased by just 37%. For some perspective on what all this means, we turn to our Dr. Frank McGeorge. And what do you make of these trends, Doc? Well, you know, Kim and Jason, the difference in hospitalizations among younger groups compared to older is really good evidence that the vaccine, so far, of course, mostly given to older people in Michigan, is actually having a protective effect. The problem is the increase in cases that we're seeing in Michigan, frankly, appears to be outpacing our vaccination efforts, especially when we look at recent trends. The state's numbers for percent positivity in new cases began a distinct rise at the end of February. It can be hard to judge the trajectory at the start of a bump without more time, but three weeks later, it is clear we have crossed several concerning thresholds. Percent positivity is now over 8%. New cases are double what they were three weeks ago. We have essentially erased five weeks of improvement in only four weeks. On top of that, hospitalizations are clearly trending upward. Now, there is an important nuance to hospitalizations seen in this graph from the MHA. There has been a much lower rate of increase in hospitalizations in the age groups who have been vaccinated. Very strong evidence of the positive effect the vaccine is having. Now, of course, this does not mean that older adults are out of the woods. As infection rates climb, so does the risk of exposure. And the more exposures, whether someone is vaccinated or not, the more chances a person has of being infected. And I also want to point out that although the percentage rise in hospitalizations are in younger groups, that is a very relative term. In this case, younger is between 30 and 50, where there is still, frankly, an important risk of complications and death. So, Doc, practically speaking, how concerning is this and what do we all need to do about it? Well, you know, Kim, the rise in cases is very concerning. So far, of course, deaths haven't increased meaningfully, but of course, that lags cases and hospitalizations by weeks. Practically speaking, everyone needs to keep up precautions and really, I would say, be more careful knowing that there is this increased transmission and frankly, get vaccinated as soon as you can. Yeah. Not out of the woods just yet. Okay, Frank, thank you so much. And because of the rising cases and hospitalizations, Beaumont Hospital will again start limiting visitation at all of their hospitals. Starting tomorrow, no one will be allowed in rooms of COVID patients. There will be some exceptions to that, including for patients in hospice. For patients without COVID, only one person is allowed in the room in most circumstances. Early next month, Beaumont will release visitation guidelines for people who are fully vaccinated. You can read all of these restrictions right now at clickondetroit.com. Now to the race to get Michigan vaccinated, as Doc alluded to. To date, 4.3 million doses have been distributed statewide, with 3.6 million shots going into arms. Next several months, we know thousands of doses each day are going to be sent to Ford Field. Today marked the official launch of the FEMA mass vaccination site, where it's expected as many as 5,000 people per day will get vaccinated. Sean Lay is live there tonight for a look at how it went for folks with the first appointment, Sean. And Jason and Kimberly, look behind me. It's so wide open. It's been like this all day. It looks like it's very slow here, but I checked with FEMA, the state, and Meyer, and they do expect by 8 o'clock tonight to have vaccinated 5,000 people on day one. Each person we talked to coming down here wants to share their personal story on why it's so important to them, so personal to them to come down here and get their shot. 
It touched my life real hard. Getting her first COVID-19 vaccination shot at Ford Field today is deeply personal for Deborah Brown from Detroit. I want to live. I want to, you know, make a difference. Her 19-year-old son is at home recovering from a stroke. She wants to get protected for him. It's the right thing to do because we never know when it's going to touch. And I lost so many friends, you know, due to this COVID. In fact, the stories of why people are coming to the Ford Field Clinic are personal for everyone. This virus touching so many lives in so many different ways. Clarence Fair is here from Pontiac. It went great. You didn't have any reservations about the no, getting the vaccine? No. What would you tell others that may have reservations? Get the shot. You need it. Protect the, protect the people around you. Inside Ford Field, Chief Medical Executive for the state, Dr. Janae Caldoun. A personal experience for her as well, administering vaccine today. Her message for those still on the fence about getting the shot. I know it's been a really long year, over a year that we've been fighting this pandemic, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. And these vaccines, they're so important. They're the way that we're going to end this pandemic. Back here live at Ford Field, Dr. Caldoun telling me she is pleased with the diversity that she's seeing inside here on day one and with registrations going forward. To recap, guys, 40,000 appointments have been made, 140,000 registrations with Meyer have been set, and again, they expect to vaccinate 5,000 by 8 o'clock tonight on day one. Back to you. Yes, yeah, such good trends with those numbers. Sean, are they taking people as walk-ins? That's a key question. Yesterday, with the soft open day, they did take walk-ins unannounced and got to about 3,000 vaccinations. So going forward, no walk-ins today. You must have an appointment. But if there is vaccine, you want to be checking uh, the state's website and social media. The state's talking about that's when they'll put out in the afternoon the potential for walk-ups or walk-ins without an appointment or registration day-to-day -day if the vaccine is available. Yeah, good advice. All right, Sean, thanks. Now let's get to the weather. One of those days where a little bit of everything, sun, rain, and maybe chasing your hat down the street. Let's get on over to Ben and uh, what we've got coming later tonight. Hi, Ben. Hey, guys. Yeah, we're almost done with the rain, but the wind's still going to be with us uh, through the evening hours at least. We'll start with the rain here on Storm Tracker 4, and there's still some downpours out there, especially out into parts of uh, Livingston County. You can see that cell just rolled out of Howell up towards Heartland, and that's going to be a quick downpour. Not going to last very long, but could be some uh, pretty intense rain there just for a quick second. We're going to see a lot more of this as we go forward into tomorrow, but the wind gusts are just starting to peak and those are close to 40 miles per hour in spots. Look at the temperature 71. We're now tied for the warmest of 2021, although uh, we're going to see those temperatures slide tonight. We'll be down to the 50s by midnight and you can see those gusts. They're going to be decreasing pretty quickly as we head past the day, or I should say past sunset tonight. And then we got to start talking about Thursday into Friday, a lot more rain and even more wind. So we'll discuss the timing on that and how it's going to affect Friday morning's commute coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben, we're learning more about the suspect in the deadly shooting rampage in a Colorado supermarket. 10 people, including a police officer, died in that rampage. The community is coming together, grieving for those who were lost. Jay Gray is in Boulder with the latest. Hey there, good evening. The grocery store where this tragedy took place continues to be a gathering point for this struggling community, trying to figure out how they can move forward after the attack. Mourners continue to be drawn to this growing wall of flowers and messages remembering those lost. It's shocking and I don't know how else to wrap my head around it besides coming back to see the damage done and pay my respects to the people who lost their lives for absolutely no reason. A veteran police officer who rushed in as the shots rang out and nine others just going through their daily routines all murdered. Ricky Olds, a manager at the grocery store, remembered as the light of her family. There's a hole. There's a hole in our family that won't be filled. I mean, we try to fill it with memories. You know, but it's tough. It's tough. The overwhelming grief in this community framed by frustration. We are sad, but we are outraged. You know, we are we are crying, but we're angry. Much of that anger focused on the man police say carried out the killing spree. 21 year old Akmaru Lacey. 
Several law enforcement officials telling NBC News the suspect appears to have a history of mental health issues, which may have been a significant factor in the shooting. He pleaded guilty to an assault charge in 2018. A police report indicates he beat up a fellow student after they called him racial names weeks earlier. As investigators continue their search for evidence and answers, there is one question that lingers for so many here. I don't know where you really can feel safe anymore. If you can't go to the grocery store, where can you go? A candlelight vigil is scheduled for this evening. The suspect's first court appearance set for tomorrow morning here. In Boulder, Colorado, Jay Gray, Local 4. Okay, Jay, and the alleged shooter is charged with 10 counts of first degree murder and one charge of attempted murder. Well, realtors say you don't even need to clean your house before it's showing. I'm sure all the men are fine with that, but uh, what has Metro Detroit's real estate market so white hot and the one thing you need to know before you decide to sell? And here's Nick. A very small Italian community needed help getting vaccines. They turned to an unlikely source and a Detroit woman is in the middle of it. A British woman missing for more than two weeks in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Coming up, how a Michigan man is at the center of this mystery at sea.